Hey guys, a uh, bit of an awkward situation here. I just recorded an entire 20 minutes of audio, never hit record on my capture. So, uh, oops. Basically, what I did in this lost video is I took a look at the How to Train Your Dragon world at Universal's new park, Epic Universe. We're just starting to get more information about this new park. Basically, if you don't know anything about it, it's five new lands and they're all combined gonna be bigger than what's already at Universal Studios right now. And there's a lot here. There's How to Train Your Dragon Land, which is what we're gonna be covering today mostly, Celestial Park, Harry Potter World, Super Nintendo World, and Dark Universe. I'm gonna react to this video introducing the How to Train Your Dragon World. Without further ado, let's just get into it. Universal Epic Universe is Universal Orlando Resort's newest theme park and will bring to life five immersive worlds. See, world. I told you, this thing is ginormous. That's quite big. Impressive. There's, I believe, three hotels on property, five worlds connected through portals, connected in a hub and spoke fashion. Wheel and spoke? Yeah, whatever. Connected in a ring like this where you can access any of them from the center. This thing, I cannot tell you how excited I am for this thing. Filled with adventures that go beyond your wildest imagination. In How to Train Your Dragon, Isle yeah. of Burke, It's literally an entire world, like Magic Kingdom, Epcot, but for How to Train Your Dragon. How fucking cool is that? With dragons in a colorful world of Viking adventures. I absolutely fell in love with the movies. Seeing How to Train Your Dragon with my kids was an incredible heartfelt moment. Coming out of the theater and going into work the next day, it's like, we have to build this. I want to build Burke. Building a theme park is like building a mini version of the world. Look, yeah, you go through you these portals. If you don't know anything about this, uh, this park, you access these worlds through like portal structures. Obviously, you're not actually teleporting because that would be f***ing insane. That's what it's going to look like. When you walk through the portal into the Isle of Burke, you're introduced to a sweeping view of And here's the a lot of the concept art that I looked at in that video. But there's several rides, a dining hall, a live show, a whole bunch of stuff, and it's all themed to be wooden and stone. As you can see, a lot of the theming is being carried from the films, and it looks very, very faithful itself almost right out of the movies like look at that there's like canvas everywhere just really exquisite painting such attention to detail when we get into a lot of the details of this park you'll see just how long they've been planning this thing every aspect of it and that shot in my opinion is actually one of the best in the park you are no longer a family unit you are vikings this is burke how to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke takes place between the second and third movies. Oh, we I did not know that. So this actually takes place between the second and third? Okay, I've never seen the third. I know, I'm sorry. But I did love the first and the second films. And knowing that this actually takes place between the second and third thematically, it's actually really good information that'll give us an idea of what's in here. We call it Burke 2.5. This is the golden age of harmony between Vikings and dragons. So this is when everything was good. This is when it was all good shit. To see some of your favorite characters, you'll be able to see dragons walking around and all the color of the That's dragons. That's so colorful, man. Our land. And the buildings and I the already looked at this ride earlier, but look, a ride like this. I don't know what kind of ride design it's called, like a pendulum, I believe, but it's actually painted to look wooden and every glider on this gliding ride is hand-painted to have their own specific designs, which was a huge part of the films. Every Viking character had their own sort of design that you would see when they were riding their dragons or just like their homes. And I think that is a very small but very important detail that looks to be carried over when they were building this new park. And it's being built right now. It's gonna be finished next year, they're anticipating. I think it was actually supposed to be done earlier than that, but COVID pushed it back about a year. So we would have had this thing like right now. That's how close it is to being done. Actions. Speaking with DreamWorks and some of the art directors, 
They were the ones who really instilled in us the vision of this world of Burke. Everything had to be Viking-sized. Mead Hall is one of the most iconic locations, so of course we had to bring it to life. Yeah, their when dining you... hall, Mead Hall, looks so good in the concept art with the lighting. The doors and this the is what I saw. Desk. Imagine like on a rainy day, just walking up to this, this, this like cafeteria dining hall experience. But look, you've even got like tapestries with scenes from the film in here. The attention to detail is astounding. Stabule and you see the main dining. I think it's just going to be fantastic. With all of our rides, each of our four major attractions are themed after the They've created camp. this like entire 3D model of the world in such detail. That's how fine-tuned they got this thing. Hiccup's Wing Gliders is our family coaster. And Hiccup, being the inventor that he is, has developed a way for us to simulate what it's like to fly on a dragon. And Toothless is not very happy, to say the least. He launches our gliders before wings that are is attached. Cool, man. So rather than a smooth flight through Burke, we're careening wildly, skimming across the top of the lagoon. So the movement in that coaster is going to be very important. They said it's going to simulate what it's like to fly a dragon, which obviously semantics, but my favorite theme park ride of all time is the Velocicoaster. And if you know anything about that roller coaster, you know that it is one of the greatest of all times, not for anything crazy or gimmicky that it does. It's just so well paced with its loops and swings and everything that it makes for such an awesome experience. And I'm expecting similar things with this ride. A big thing about the Velocicoaster is it got real close to the water. And this looks like it's gonna do the same thing. We're careening wildly, skimming across the top of the lagoon. It's really an adventure. Dragon racing! Dragon this, racers yeah, this is the pendulum ride. We all get to fly together and spin upside down as many times as you want. So you can actually You'll spin create an experience in this ride. As wild or as mild as you want it to be. It's actually one of the attractions I was most excited for in the whole park. Getting to ride it during testing was very exciting. I think uh, I rode it like this seven This dude times. got to ride it? Fucking lucky dude. That one looks cool. I'm not even a huge fan of pendulum rides myself, but there's two of them going at the same time. And just the fact that the wings, like the gliders, the wings and the gliders are so, they paid attention to detail, makes me feel like this is going to be a really cool experience to know how to put out dragon fires because it's gonna happen eventually. This is the one I'm most excited for, actually. This is a freaking water gun ride that you not only get to shoot targets that are quote unquote on fire, but you also get to shoot other people, which is awesome. Fire drill is an and it's called, that is actually It's called fire drill, which is such a weird name. It's like so simple, but like you walk in the park like, man, fucking fire drill, let's go. Let's do fire drill again. Like, it just works. You have two sides of the boat competing against each other with a series of mechanical targets. You will probably get soaked. Viking training camp is for our smaller- Yeah, they've kind of skipped over it, but in the details on the website, you're not only shooting these mechanical targets, you're also shooting other people. Because the range on these things, they said is 28 feet, which is long for a water gun you are gonna get absolutely soaked down to your balls. Viking training camp is for our smaller Vikings. It is not only just a kid's play area, but it's an area dedicated to teaching Vikings about all the classes of dragons. There's gonna be lots of cool discoveries for our littlest Vikings to interact with and explore. And they're putting stuff for kids. That's nice. The Untrainable Dragon is a live show experience that really brings home the DreamWorks mantra of heart and humor. This is a Broadway level production. Whoa, look at the that. They got features. like actual traditional animation on the projectors. That the is humor. cool, dude. This is a Broadway level like, production. Whoa. This show features incredible costuming and sets and advanced technology that help bring these amazing dragons to life. Oh yeah, that's another thing. 
they said in the description for this ride on their website, not in this video, but on the website, that there is, I mean, you see him right here. It's a practical effect animatronic, toothless, but he can fly over the audience and his wingspan is 27 feet, weighs like 1,150 pounds, which is something that I've never really seen at a live show. Just have something fly over your head. My favorite live show is the Born Stunt Tacular or something like along those lines where they use camera tricks and they mix practical and digital effects. And that has sort of a similar vibe to this, it looks like. You never cease to amaze me, bud. Thank you. We have dragons flying overhead. We have dragons that are shooting out flames. And they're not just in the distance, they're right in front of you. If you're coming to Burke, you want to meet Toothless. You're going to come face to face with Toothless Aww. and have a meaningful experience with this dragon. Giving guests that opportunity that is so to recreate cute, dude. that moment where Hiccup puts out his hand. Everyone's going to want that iconic shot that we saw. It's the one that pushing like this. I definitely want Aww. that. I'll probably cry. <laughs> that is a really nice touch, and it shows that they really know what they're doing here. Isle of Burke has something for everyone of all ages, from the attractions down to the little moments scattered throughout the, the land. That looks fucking cool. That looks fucking cool as fuck. It's just, it's just the best land ever. And this is one out of the five lands we're getting. You guys have no idea the shakeup that's about to happen in Orlando. To the meet and greets, to the live show. We always have to find ways to push the envelope and do things we've never done before. I think the best thing about an immersive environment is that you walk into it and you believe that's a land that you wanted to live in. It is going to give guests an experience that they will never forget. We're creating an experience that is gonna bring joy to millions of people who come to Epic Universe in the Isle of Burke. Everything about this world is larger than life, and there are so many more adventures and surprises to discover. This amazing new world is going to allow you to enjoy everything you love about how to train your dragon in a whole new way. And you'll only be able to experience it at Universal Epic Yep. Universe. They're really putting, they're going balls to the wall on this thing, baby. And Universal's got the money to back it up. That's the thing. Studios are struggling right now. Universal, probably one of the ones that aren't struggling as much. And the level of detail on this thing, which I keep saying, it just goes to show how much they've been thinking about this and every little detail. So yeah, that was just kind of my reaction and thoughts on this new park. I don't really talk about park stuff on my channel, like ever. This is like the first time I've done that. But you know, if this does well, I'd like to talk about the other parks too. Because this stuff really interests me. I'm not even a big theme park guy. I don't love them or anything. But this one just really caught my eye because it's DreamWorks property that they care about like the most. So I think obviously it makes sense that it's the one getting the theme park treatment. I would have loved to have seen a Kung Fu Panda universe. Don't get me wrong. And that one, if they keep building on this mega park, that's probably what they're going to do next. But yeah, let me know what you guys think of all of these ideas, concept art in the description. I love it personally. I cannot wait to be here. I'm going to be first in line for this thing.